Hello world, this is Random Fix, and in this video today, I'm going to show you how to go ahead and refill your battery here, and I'm going to show you how to do this safely, and even further, I'm going to show you why we're doing this. So this is my 2016 Toyota here, and it is a hybrid, but to get the vehicle started, it uses this battery to power up the electronics, not the engine, but most electronics. So your vehicle might actually be a little different. However, this 12 volt battery is very essential and 99.9% .9 of vehicles have one of these batteries up front. And sometimes we get lucky where these batteries can actually be serviced. And what happens is the fluid inside goes and gets overheated from weather or from charging and some of the water actually evaporates. And on some batteries they even have a fluid line. So if you look down on my battery right here, it says lower level right here. And so the top part would be the upper level. And you have the same exact readings on this side right here. It's a little bit harder to see. But they're on both sides of the battery so I have a low tester here on the car and to the naked eye this looks like it's a good battery it shouldn't cause you any kind of problems well on this vehicle since it doesn't use the 12 volt battery here to start the engine it only uses it to start the electronics and then it has a bigger battery that the hybrid system has that's why this battery car is still running. So let me show you guys what I'm talking about here. So here we go. And we're going to go and put a load on the vehicle. So basically I hooked this up very easy. Positive to positive, negative to negative. And these run under $30. And I'll have a link to anything that I use in the video box below. And we're going to put a load on here. And you can see there's a little graph right here that tells me cold cranking amps and my vehicle happens to have a 295 cold cranking amp battery so I'm on the very bottom of the scale here and when I put a load on here you can see that the battery goes near 8 volts and you only want to do this for about 10 seconds because this coil over here really starts getting hot and we can see that we dropped below 9.6 volts and 9.6 volts is essential for an engine starting. So if this is a regular gasoline powered vehicle, we'd be stranded. So I know this is gonna catch up to me sooner than later. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to go ahead and add fluid to here and how to do it safely and what you'll need. So to safely do this, we're gonna need some gloves and you wanna use some latex nylon gloves and you want to definitely have some goggles on because that is acid in there and if it gets in your eyes it could cause blindness so you want to go and make sure that you wash anything off that gets in contact with that fluid right away and i'm going to show you guys how to make a solution using baking soda right here to neutralize anything in case something does happen so if that acid ends up on your paint that's not going to be good so we're going to go and show you how to make this and then we're going to need just distilled water plain distilled water with nothing added and most of the times a flathead screwdriver like this is going to do and we want to make sure we do not use any power tools because i love power tools but we're going to be basically around hydrogen no open flames no cigarette smoking nothing like that right now and try to avoid turning things on and off for no reason uh, even on your car here. So we got most of the tools we need here and we got a flashlight too. And what we're going to do is we're going to simply go ahead and pour some baking soda here into a cup. You want to use a plastic cup and I'm going to add some water and you may be able to do without this, but if you have a turkey baster like this, it really makes it easier to go ahead and add fluid to the battery without having to go and do a huge cleanup afterwards and I'm going to show you how to go ahead and mix this up now 
All right, so our neutralizing fluid here is made. And one last thing I wanted to talk about is before you start, you wanna see if you can go ahead and clean up this area here. So I actually went through when I was washing my car the other day and I just took some soap and took a rag and wiped this area down, but it was definitely not this clean. So I'll give it a quick wipe down again so nothing gets down into those battery cells. So I got my gloves on and my goggles on my eyes and now I'm going to go ahead and loosen all these up. Alright so all the caps are loose, I'm going to throw them in here. And remember if you have a different style cap, the rectangular ones, you just put the screwdriver underneath and they just flip up. And now we're going to go look down into the actual hole. And if you look down there, there's actually like a, a metal plate. And you can see my metal plate is down there. And this one is really low on fluid. And these other ones are a little bit better. But basically, you want to add the fluid to where the actual metal part is covered. And if you have reference marks like I showed you here, it'll make it a little bit easier. So that's your low point. As you're doing this, you want to make sure that you're not really getting all that dirt that sat around the cap inside. So try to use a paper towel or anything else to go clean that up so it does not get in there. So I took some water out of the distilled jug here and poured it into a cup so it's a little bit easier. And now I'm just going to go ahead and use a turkey baster and get some water in here and slowly refill it to the correct level and you want to make sure your vehicle battery is level and for best practices especially if the battery is really tucked away you want to have the battery out of the car and they do make a special fluid for this too if you don't want to use the still water uh, which is recommended but they make some product out there called battery water I think they sell it at pet boys and it's a yellow container and you can use that so really keep an eye on how much distilled water you're putting in and do a drop by drop hey guys really quick if you're enjoying the video make sure you guys give the video a thumbs up and if you guys are new to the channel hit the subscribe button it really lets me know how I'm doing and lets YouTube know that I'm bringing you guys value content and your support is much appreciated. Thanks. All right, so I got it all filled up to where it needs to be. And I'm gonna do a quick little cleanup here. And then one thing to keep in mind, they actually sell specific gravity testers that you can pick up at your local auto supply store. And that does help. But you know, most of the cases on here, um, this, is not a permanent fix I know it's not a brand new battery however it is gonna last another one or two years and literally cost me I think 99 cents for the water all right so I clean up the caps here so that way I don't get all that gunk in there and I'm gonna go ahead and pop all these back in all right so all these are nice and tight if you took your battery out of the vehicle, you want to make sure you put any of the bracketing back because I've actually seen it where people don't put their bracketing back. And if you have those other style caps and your vehicle is on a crazy hill, what will happen is the battery will lean back. Somehow or another little battery acid makes it past the little seal and somehow it starts a chemical fire and the car catches on fire. I have seen it. And so I want to make sure you guys prevent that. So always put that bracket back and that keeps the battery from shaking as well and prevents further damage to the cells. And if you do enough damage, the cell inside can actually break. And I've seen a lot of vehicles where you can go ahead and jump it and the battery is so bad and it's such a big draw on the vehicle that the alternator can't even keep up with it. So if you're ever having an issue with the vehicle, Always go for the battery first. Do something like a load test instead of just hooking it up to 
a battery charger and thinking that it's charged because you might be getting a surface charge or a ghost charge and that's going to be causing you lots of headaches. I cannot tell you how much money I've made when I worked at the shop just off battery issues. They will cause computer problems, transmission problems, they'll cause lights to flicker, uh, vehicles not to start, people will start replacing alternators, they'll start replacing starters, and all kind of things can happen because of a bad battery. And now that I'm done with that, I'm going to go ahead and remove my distilled water and get my neutralizing water over here. I'm going to go ahead and neutralize anything where it touched it and you can see right there that there's a little foaming action that occurred. And lastly, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and hook up this battery right here to a battery tender or trickle charger. All right, so I got my battery tender here. And this happens to be a bigger battery tender. It's a 5 amp. So you want to try to see if you can grab one of these or maybe a 1.5 amp battery tender. And these are great because now that we've went ahead and added the distilled water, we need to go ahead and charge the battery. And you want to run this in a way where you can actually close the hood and leave it overnight. And the best part with using something like the battery tender here is that it's intelligent and you can't get it wrong. And when the battery is good, it just goes ahead and turns green down here. And I'm going to go ahead and close up the hood now and leave this charging overnight. And tomorrow, after the battery is charged, we're going to come and test it and see how the battery actually does after it's been on charge and make sure that it actually survives a load test here. And the following morning, let's see what happens by doing a quick little load test. And the battery is completely charged. It's a solid green. And with the load tester connected, let's go ahead and try to burn off any kind of surface or ghost charge by holding this down for about three seconds and one two three perfect so we saw that right now the battery voltage actually stayed up above the nine volt range right here so now let's do a, about a 10 second low test and see what happens All right, so that actually did pretty well. You guys can see right here when I actually put the low test on, it's staying right in the borderline. And for a battery that was almost going to get replaced, I'm actually happy with this result. And I'll try to keep you guys updated in the notes on what happened with the battery and how it's doing. But over here, again, uh, we're sitting at above 12 volts. And the low test did stay in the weak area, but this is a lower cold cranking amps battery, so I was expecting that. Overall, good results. Hey guys, I wanted to give you guys an update. So after about three months, the car didn't start again. Uh, when the weather got a little colder, it stopped starting, and the battery is now on the actual cart here, and no longer starts. So. As much as I hate to admit it, it is not a permanent fix. It's going to work temporarily. And I may do the wake up method where you basically hook up a very strong charger here and let that cycle for about five times for 15 minutes. Let it cool off for 45 minutes each time and see how that goes. So if you guys want to see that, please comment down below. But adding just distilled water and pretending everything is going to get better not really the case here. Thanks again guys for watching and please leave your comments down below.